Can you see my screen with this code? Okay. So this is last week's code. This is June 10 file, of course, the last file that I worked on. And I showed everyone that, uh, that how do we create links? This is very important. How, how do we access this one? So never ever we will just, you know, access the physical directory of my machine. Rather, I will always do this relative linking. And this relative linking will give me this facility that my page will always be working. My page will always be there and it will always be working, right? So we always use this kind of thing. Uh, let us listen. You're talking about these two dots you're talking about? Okay. So let us listen about that. I have discussed that, I think, in, the, in, in last week, the first week. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you again. So when you when you do a double dot, it means that you want to... So you see here, let me just show you the structure. The pages, the page I'm working on is June 10. And I am inside this pages folder. Like June 10 is inside this pages folder. So let us say if I want to access anything which is not in this page, rather it's parent page, like it's parent. It's parent is week five. So if I want to access from a parent, because index.html is in my parent, like as a as June 10 document, index is in my parent. My parent is week five. So if I want to access something outside of yourself and to the parent, you will use double dot. Now, you will understand this by looking at this. When I say dot forward slash, I'm talking about the current directory. You see, contact.html is in the same directory as this one. So uh, as June 10. So I will use dot forward slash. Let us say, is that making sense to you? It's a very important question that you have asked. Now, if I want to access something from my parent, like which is not in the same directory, rather it is outside of that directory. So what I'll do, I'll say, okay, dot dot, go one level back go one level back and there you will find index.html connected to that that index.html let me say does that uh, does that make sense and and the same goes over here because you see oh yeah so that's that's a wonderful question you know let me say what will happen when you will upload your web, web website for example you will upload this week 5 by week 5 i mean you will have your website name folder so when you will upload this folder, these all links will definitely work for you because they will become relative to your folder. Let us and you get the answer. Yeah, so they will become the relative. And that's why I'm just doing that. You know, let us see here. If I do something like this, C colon forward slash Norman PC underscore, like, you know, you know what I mean? If I do something like this, this rubbish thing, and I don't know, I'm just writing you just to make you understand. If I write this C colon Norman PC week five index.html. Will that work when I when I host it on the net uh, on, on a website? Never ever it will work. Why? Because of course this is my directory structure. So that's why you need to give, you need to give the relative URL of that one. So again, dot dot means something in my parent, something in my parent as a June 10 HTML. So index.html. So see here another example. I want to I want to click to an images in HTML link, and that also results in index.html. You remember there was a hash pick point over there. So for that also, what I'll do, I'll say, okay, dot, dot, index.html. Inside that index.html, there is a point, picture, pick, and I want to access that one. Does that make sense to everyone? Let us ask this question, but I think it's a very nice, it's a very important question if you don't have understanding of what is going on. And if you see here, when I have to access something from index.html from these pages, so what I'll do, dot forward slash. So dot forward slash, you know, represents the current directory. In the current directory, you'll find a directory which is name is pages. Inside that, there is a document about.html. Let us and is it is it making now more sense to you? Good. And, and how about? Okay. So how about, uh, how about this uh, uh, for everyone? Not only let us and? Latisan is always very actively replying. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, that's good. So this was about week five, you know, and today we have to start our week six. And by the way, you know, because I have a class in the morning, so I'll start that week five, week six also. So I'm starting this week six. But what I'll do for you guys, I'll do is that I'll create a new file. As you remember, I always create a new file. But again, here also, I have just scripted something. I'll talk about that. And there is something. So, but I'll but what I am doing 
what I am doing that I am creating a new file and I'm calling it this index nee.html, right? And I will just you know take this file away maybe from there and I'll share the recording from the from that one. But anyhow, I, I can leave that one as well. So this is your index file for today, right? I'll just take away this index file because I, or maybe I would like it to keep it open. So what I'll do is that I'll open in a new window because I just would like to see that what I have discussed over there. So it should, I, I should not miss anything from your, from your side. So I'm just opening this, uh, this file again. Okay, I'll just open up the file. Where is this week six file? Index.html. It should open index.html. Okay. Right. So this is our index NEE. -E. This is uh, for you, and index.html is also there. You'll find almost the same components, but again, I will just try to make you explain what is written. Okay, first of all, I would like to create my emit abbreviation whole document. Just create the whole document. And I will call this as I have done over there as well. I will call this as a title. I will call this lecture of June 14, right? So again, it's it's for your class specifically, but as I said, the contents will be same. Lecture June 14. And again, because this is a different one, so NEE, -E, so that you remember that this was our document. Right, so let's put an H1 over here. And this again, lecture notes. June 14, 2022, again, NEE, -E, so that it's a bit different from our, our piece. So what I'll do is that I'll just keep on working with this one and I'll just show you that whatever I have done in index.html, I will try to do this here over here as well. And you just, you know, you just need to just, you know, look focus on that one and I'll, I will let you know what is going on. So the first thing that I want to discuss over here is, I'll give it an H2, semantic elements in semantic elements, elements in HTML. This is our first topic. I'll run this file, index NE with live server. So I'll just run that one. And where is it running? It's running here. I'll bring that over here. So this is our HTML file that is running. Um, yes, I can, I can run that live share as well, let me say, but, uh, uh, so you, 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 uh, why do you want me to just run that? You want to, you want to, yeah. So you want to just share, like, you know, for the, for, for the, for having the code automatically, or you want to just, you know, because that's a collaborative working and yes, you can have that one as well. Live share, if I can use that. But right now, just just be with be, be with it and try to you know type that one by yourself. So I'll just look at that one. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> yeah, live server. That's what that's what I. Okay, so yes, live server is running over here, right? Live server is running over here. Now you 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 you, what you wanted is done over here. Let this right? Okay, yes, fine. So we are starting semantic elements. Now here I will open up your notes. Uh, for note file, and I'll show you some very interesting things over here. I'm talking about these semantic elements. If you see here, we have certain semantic groupings that we make in our HTML document for, you know, again, for the purpose of the machine readers, for the purpose of the, for, for the purpose of that one. So there are certain elements that we use in HTML to represent to represent some semantical groupings of the elements. When I say semantical groupings of the element, I hope you understand that semantical grouping means that we are talking about a situation where everyone can look at my code and know that what is going on inside that code. What does, what does that mean? I'll just show you over here. If I write a paragraph tag, and by the way, if I write a link between that one, so for example, I say that so I have, you know, I, let me just tell you that the pages is always there and there is a semantic.html file. Just don't worry about that. But I want to just, you know, link with that one. So if I say um, dot forward slash pages slash semantic.html, you know what I mean? I just want to connect or not page, pages, pages slash semantic.html. So I want to say, for example, semantic page or page two. 
right? Page two for today's class, right? So what I've done is that I have just created, and I can create one more ahrefs. So you can see the live output over here as you as you are asking. I can just you know maybe I can run another ahrefs, and I say that there is another pages which is not there, but I can say okay if I create an about dot html, about link should be there like that, and they don't have a line break. I'll put a line break, and I'll tell you line break also comes automatically sometimes. Anyhow, now my big question or my big like you know description over here. I would like you to be, you know, listening this very carefully. Do I, if I just look at the tag, the element, P element, which has the links inside that, and you know, these are the navigational links of my website. By the way, these are these are very important. You know, these are very important component of my website. Now, if you see that these are the two links, but can I guess by looking at this paragraph that what is inside that? It's a question. Can I just looking at the paragraph? Yeah, exactly. Paragraph. I, can I know that? No. So yes. So as as has mentioned, there is a tag called nav tag. Exactly. No paragraph can have anything. That is all. It can have anything at all. It can be text. It can be anything at all. It can be links by the way. But you know what I'm what I'm trying to say here. Just listen. Looking at this P, the machine reader will never know what is inside this paragraph. Right. Okay. So. For that we have a we have an element called nav element. As we see, there is a nav also given. Nav, nav is basically navigational element. Now, listen about this very important concept. When machine reader will come and read my notes, it's for a accessibility issue or anything. When it will reach to this nav element, it will say, okay, whatever is inside that should be the links of the next website. Does that make sense to everyone other than Latisan, by the way? <laughs> Does that make sense? Nav will tell machine reader, okay, all the links, all the navigational links will find will be will be found over here, right? So, so that is that is what that is basically one of the section sectional element that tells the browser, and this is called semantic sectional elements. It's not syntactic element. Now, the problem comes here when students start when I start this discussion of nav. Index N E is the master page. Yeah, exactly. Index N E is the master page. Yes, let's listen. It's 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 the master page. Yes. Okay. So you see here that, and this is this is index N E running over here, right? So if you see here that uh, the problem that I get after discussing that. Now let me tell you one more. There is one more tag, one more element, and I'll show you that header. Header is called header might contain logo or introduction to the website to the web page. Introduction to the page. Now let me let me complete that all those all those you know all those uh, uh, semantic element. There is a there is another element called main. Main is basically called the main body or the content of the web page. Again, the main content of the web page. So main comes over there. Then there is another one which is called footer. So I'll just talk about all of them, but I'm just giving you an example. Footer. Footer might contains again if you remember C O P Y. Copy, and you can say, for example, Seneca College. Copyright at Seneca College, right? And and you can just use a policy. You see some documents, some policy or careers, something like that. You see some links come in the bottom. So do you see here? It does like diagrammatically does not make any difference. Looks like it's it's the same page. I've just used some tags, but you know graphically, like semantically, this is is a very different document. Semantically, it's all over a new document. Why? Because now I have a header section that is telling me this is the introduction. So see here, a header section has introductory material at the top of the document. It will be just you know, this will be just. And maybe I I I just like to put this maybe this this is starting information into that one as well. So I say my header contains all these things, right? So again, diagrammatically there will be no difference, but I'm just letting you know that header is. So semantically, header is there. Now the problem which comes. When I discuss this header, when I discuss this main, when I discuss this footer, and and this main should have some more text. Let's bring some lorem, our good friend. Let's bring some lorem over here, and make it a word wrap. So you see here that now it has some some text like that. So when I start discussing it, students start getting confused with this head and header and body and the main. I expect you guys to be very very sharp in this one. Listen, this head. this html and this body 
they are the syntactical elements without which technically speaking your html document will not be completed is that is that making a little sense i why i have stopped here because i want you to realize something very important never mix these tags with the tags that we have just discussed with header with main someone might ask a question okay can i have a header inside head no can i have a main inside head never head is a syntactical head which should always be there and all these tags which i'm talking about all these elements should come inside the body of the body of the html page should i expect i was successful in trans, like you know transferring what i what i want you to understand the concept very important concept and by the way today i'll talk about the html validation you will know it by yourself as well but do you do you understand the concept this header this nav this main these are all they represent semantical structuring and there is article and section i'll talk about that header nav main and footer we have used these four so these are the basically semantical structures but that never means that i will disturb my these three elements can i get a response from other than lathis and from anyone so you can understanding that one this is typically what that always remember that this has to go this way this has to go this yes and then inside the body you can just introduce a header this is the header section this is the nav section this is the main section now when the screen reader will come it will read my document and say okay this is the footer section which of course graphically does not make any difference but do you know that semantically this document is very different from that one do you understand that and by the way in the morning session i've created another semantic document i'll just show you because i have connected it this is a semantic, and i'll tell you that the, how this is style is coming but i'll i'll talk about that but this is another semantic page that i have created but don't, don't worry about that i have just implemented that semantics over here so do you understand header means the so again what i'm saying is what i want to say header is an optional tag if i remove that no it makes no difference to the document do you do you know what i'm saying if you take away header no problems because it's an optional tag but if i ask you if i take away this head is that equal to that one no head is a semantical requirement that should definitely be there make sense everyone exactly it will still be a valid page if i just take away all these things all this footer it is a still a valid page but second if someone does it it says okay i will use header instead of head so second it's a it's a foolish thing you know what i mean so you you, you say okay i'll use header header and main and all these will always come inside the body tag i hope i'm i'm clear enough for everyone second says it's still a valid page yes second you're right do you guys understand that one that's wonderful that's wonderful now let's talk about let's talk about something we have talked about semantic elements and I, i'll just you know continue with that one now after semantic elements i would like to talk about so again let's make a another h2 and i would like to talk about generic containers and i'll i'll use the one of the container over here as well generic containers in html5 we have certain uh, not not generic containers first of all i'll talk our uh, type of elements there are different types of elements i'll i'll, I'll i would like to talk about types of elements there are two types of elements i'll put them in ol so that you can see the output the first type of elements are called block level elements and the second type of elements are called inline elements or inline level elements or inline elements this is a very important concept one is called block level element and one is called inline level element now a very important observation block so so this is the definition is over here as well i can show you it over here it, they have discussed it over here. element types block versus inline right you can just read that or, or we can read it over here block line elements create a block of content in a page with an empty line before and after them block elements fill the width of their parent element block elements can contain other block elements inline elements or text now i would like to tell you a very important thing now see here i have a h1 over here if i come over here do you see me within the line of h1 now i have just put a question do you see me within the line of the h1 now i go back over here and i hit save 
now. H1 was ending at NE. Understand everyone? Do you see that it has just pushed it on the next line? Why? Because H1 is a block level element. A block level element occupies one line before that, one line after that, never allows any content to run through after that. Do you guys make sense of it? This is H1 and H1 is a block level element. And if something is a block level element, it will never allow anything to run after them. It will never allow anything before their one line and before after one line. This is a block level element. Okay, that's good. I can see some feedback. Okay, now if you come here, I'll show you another element. I put, I intentionally put a BR, but if I just take away this BR and I hit save, do you see why both links are coming in same line? And even if I if I type something, do you see me in the same line? Save here. Oh, uh, I made sorry, <laughs> I made that comment. In this, do you see me in the same line? Save that. Okay. Do you see that after page two, I see that same line. Do you see that? So now. This anchor is not a block level element. This anchor is an inline element. Creates inline content, which is part of the containing block. Inline elements can contain other inline elements, but no block elements inside inline elements. What are the other examples of inline elements? I will show you one more example. If I come over here, anchor is one of them. And there is one more. If I write an IMG tag, okay. IMG tag. If I IMG, if I use, I have some images over here. I'll, I can use the card.jpg. I'll tell you later on. I have just, you know, use that card.jpg. And I can give it a width of 100 because I want to show you something. If I bring a picture, if I hit save, do you see that picture is also coming in the same line? Are you understanding that everyone? So image is also an inline element. And even if I, if I put a text after that, do you see me in the same line? So you will see, yes, you will see me in the same line. If I hit that say, you see that everything is coming in the same line. So should I understand that you understand the difference between block level and inline elements? So block level element, if wherever the block level element will come, it will never allow any content after to run after that one. You see that it is not allowing this H1 to run after this. Block level elements will occupy a block. Now, I had a question in the morning class and it's a very nice question. I, I think someone would have this question in their mind, can I change their, this property of being block level or being inline level? Anyone has an answer? Someone asked in the, in the morning class. So I would like to ask you, you guys, because I know that you are smart guys. You will tell, can I, can I change this property of being block level into inline level or being inline level into block level? Yes or no? Any idea? It's just a, you know, wild guess. Second, how would we do that? Can you, can you have, do you have just a quick idea? That's wonderful. Yes, we can do that. But how would we do that? That's an important part. How would we do that? With options. That's good. Very nice. That's very nice answer. Anyone else? Sinthuram, thank you. Now listen about that. Second, very nice. Wonderful. I will do that by using CSS, cascading style shapes that we have not discussed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't worry about that. So I can change a block level element into an inline element like this or an inline element into a block level element like this, but by using CSS, which we have not discussed till now. So are you getting that? You are right by adding attributes, but attributes for the styling. We'll use a styling for that. And how about second, second, you got it? CSS, cascading style sheets. And I'll tell you about that one, but don't worry about that right now. It's just understand, okay. If something is block level, it is block level. If it's something is uh, is basically inline level, it is inline level. Don't worry about that one. But the question was valid. That's why. So you see, IMG is inline. Anchor is inline. You see that? So these are these are all inline elements. I hope you understand the concept, right? Okay. So this is block level and inline elements. I hope you will you will understand that. Now there comes another one. Generic containers. We will use a lot of generic containers in our document, right? And I'll, I'll show you what are generic containers. So we have two generic containers. I'll again put an OL just to just to show you. And the one of the generic container is, is a div tag or div element. And the other generic container is 
span element span element and div element see here div and span element they are very very important very very interesting so first of all what is this div element i can just you know uh, i can just tell you about about this div element for example and i can write it over here div element a generic generic block level element right and what is this span a generic generic inline element and i'll tell you what does that mean so see here it is given it's given over there block level inline and they have the div element a generic block level container and a span is a generic inline level container what does that typically mean it means that i can wrap around my all document in one of the div and i can say that okay there is one container that will contain my all document number one or there will be multiple containers that will contain for example my topic by topic topic by topic they will contain my my values inside that so for example you know the first topic is from this point if i show you from this point semantic elements to this point we have this first topic you know what i mean i want to make them in in a one logical group in a one section what i'll do or first of all let's talk about it if i come over here at the very top and i say div i want to make a container and see what what i want to put inside that i will be happy if you if you give me a feedback before the body after the last thing i i say div place this div over here so do you think that i have wrapped around my all document inside a div inside a one container one logical container now i can so again this is the first part now the second part is that i would i would like to say okay i want to do this in one container so i will come over here see here i will come over here and what i'll do i'll just put a div and i'll cut this div and where should i paste it can anyone tell me can anyone tell me where should i paste it where my first topic is completing after this careers word exactly so right before the h1 after the footer yes so i place this one so do you think that now this has become one logical container for me a div and i can do the same and and what is the benefit of that i can come to this one and i can give it an id so i i can say topic one you know what i mean i can give it an id and if you can give it something an id it means that you can access that for styling for scripting you can always access that and even if you remember for internal linking exactly sagin you are right so sagin you see another benefit of that another benefit of that if i come over here and i make it another div and i say that okay its id will be uh, topic 2 topic 2 you see where should i paste this ending div let me tell you okay after well very simple this is another div i want to make another div and i want to give it an id so i will say topic 3 and i'll cut this div and i put where after a while you know so this will be my third div okay let us say this is a very good question why don't you use use section let me tell you why with uh, it's it's not matter of why don't we use we can use either of them i can use div or a section both means same the the only reason of not using section to start with is even though section is a semantical element but at one point section also becomes a very generic element in itself you know section section for what <laughs> let us try to understand nav nav for navigation section section for what so section might have multiple types of section so it's really up to you you can use a section over here let us and that's a very good question but you understand what what i'm saying section might also be in a generic container by the way even though even though section comes inside what i i can see a section comes inside the inside that uh, semantic elements but again a group of related element in a document representing one section of the whole so it can be a generic section that can represent anything at all and by the way we can use the section as well so do you understand the div purpose so this div for example i can say div id equal to parent it's a parent div for everything you know what i mean a parent div and by the way just remember this parent div will play a very important role when we'll be talking about css grids and when we'll be just making grids and making our page you know be making our page response or responsive adaptive and responsive to that right right but anyway just just to understand that this is now what is the benefit of defining this div i'll i'll show you benefit i can just copy this div 
see here and i come over here and i paste it over here back and i can just say topic for now <laughs> and now my new topic is ready for example if it is you know uh just uh, talk about like image sizes i'll talk about image sizes and i'll i'll give you another another very good website image sizes i'll talk about so for example that becomes another topic for me and i can just come over here and i can say load over here and i can say okay this is become this is become one one or more so now i can just keep on adding these divs and divs will make sections like like let us and us they will keep on making the section 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 now what is the span then we talked about the div div is a generic block level container while its span is a generic inline container what does that mean for example i want to say so that i want to make this the main body i want to give them a particular unique id but i don't want to make them graphically looking different from this you see the main body so i will come over here and i will before the main body i'll just come over here and i'll write a span sorry i'll write a span a span element and i'll put the main body inside that i hope everyone is getting that i paste that now Graphic, graphically there is no difference between this main body and before because just it has just gone inside the span let me make it big right it's looking very odd right so main body is exactly the same as it was before but the but the thing is that now i can just give i can just give that okay for example uh, any so any text span would be used to describe that th uh, describe the image uh, there can be lots of lots of purposes not only the image let us you see that i have just i have just named this main body and and with something so it's another way of just defining an id for that particular id as, as well so for example if i say that this this word i want to make it uh, like you know this i want to make it a link you will say okay i would i can make a link to this one i can i can uh, let's access to this one so i'll come over here and i say okay span span text and i say okay just this id cut that one paste that inside that and give it an id id is equal to you know for example i say middle something like that so now this id word would be accessible where is this id word i don't know i'll have to find i think this is the id word so this is id word is already like it's it's now renamed for something and i can apply some styling i can do a lots of lots of wonderful things did i make myself clear about this uh, div and span container span is a generic container it flows with the document it never makes your so for example you know for some reason if i other than span if i use a div over here if i use a div over here what will happen you know what will happen because div is a block level generic container if i hit save you see that now it has gone in a, in a new line a new a, a complete new paragraph over here which i don't want <laughs> i want it to be a span not a not an id so span is a inline one and id will remain into it into it span second are you getting that one everyone not only second and lastest because they are always actively replying i'm waiting for others to just not chime in divan okay that's wonderful okay right right on so this is basically the span and this is basically the the you know the the div tag so you guys getting that one so i've just try to just try to collect collect everything over here you know the span you should know that this is basically the example of block level and inline level elements and exactly yes you're right you're right you can you can use that one as well and by the way i don't know if i if i've discussed that or not or, and if if it is very meaning i'll i'll just discuss that so making bold is basically we used to bold it before that with the b tag but not anymore now see we use strong tag now instead of the, instead of that one and let us and do you know the reason i'll tell you the reason this is the accessibility issues again this is strong tag when when my document will be read by a screen reader it will say okay strong means that i have to emphasize on that i i have to i have to make it strong and there is yeah, exactly i will tell you <laughs> let us and Uh, bear with me because you know i have not told you how to change the font i can i can tell you a very old method which is which is obsolete <laughs> yeah you are getting ahead so i'll tell you how to change the fonts and you will really enjoy that and definitely i'll give you another another very short term short term and another tag is emphasize em 
emphasize make something as italicized so if i just put all this text into emphasize so you see that now my emphasize it has just emphasized it has just italicized this text you know what i mean and by the way by the way if i ask a question do you think that this strong and em yeah there can be any number any number strong and em are inline elements or a block level elements they are all in line <laughs> and this is this is very simple question why because you know that okay whenever you have just this one you you will just you know come over there okay so just to just to answer few things so just to make this document looking a bit better i'm telling you something very interesting which we have not discussed so it is again the part of our topic for today but i will just you know i I'll, i'll talk about image sizes and i'll talk about this one later one as well but i will give just one another div over here oh sorry i'll just give another div over here i'll copy this one paste that one i'll just i'll call it topic 5 and i'll say not image sizes i'll say linking different outside files linking document with resources how do we link the document with resources i talk about that one in detail but first thing that i want like to tell you over here is not this one how to link to an already made css by someone now we will discuss css and we will work on css big time and i will tell you each and everything about the css but here i am i would like to tell you something very interesting i would like to tell you here that you can why it is not recognizing this p because p is why is p is not coming is the as the proper tag like prettier is not working it means you know it means that technically i made a mistake so let me just see that how to link to someone else's css let me just see that so oh, it means i have just you know misplaced some tag or something for that reason it is just you know it is not making it prettier i don't know what mistake i have done h2 h2 div is there oh no no div is there div is also there but i have just made something wrong for which so so always remember if your prettier is not working it means there is something wrong and i'll i'll check that one but anyhow how to connect our document with anyone css so now now remember please there are certain pre made css files available on internet that people have made available for us to work on one of them is called skeleton css so if i go to skeleton css design if i just you know link link on that if i go there i will find the link of a file http i'll talk about what is this cdn what is this you know content delivery network but right now just you see that there is a link of a css i will copy this link copy url i'll come back to my document please be with me and i'll use a tag i'll call link i'll say link it says well is equal to style sheet don't worry about that just whatever i have copied just paste it over here and now see the magic in our document i just had to do that and i hit save yes hit save now see my document looks a bit more acceptable that sorry Uh, so, so no need to type. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that isn't that's an optional thing. You can place that, but you can you can leave that out. So do you see that now? It, it started to look a, a bit better than that one. And now there is one more. I'll tell you that one, and that you will enjoy the most. Water CSS. If I show you water CSS, this is a very interesting one. I I personally like this one. If you copy this water CSS, you don't need to put a link over here because link is already there, right? It has just created everything. so if i go over there and i say okay i don't want this this one if i just take it away my document is back to a back to very bad situation if i paste that water css hit save see my document looks good let us see does it look cool now <laughs> a bit cooler than what it was before a bit more website <laughs> a bit more website and again i did i did not tell you how to change the different font <laughs> so yeah exactly we can do the dark theme as well so you see water has as so many different things if you want a dark theme you can use this one light theme this one if you want a dark theme you can just copy to clipboard as yes a second has reached to the right point and if i paste this one instead you will see my page looks like this looks good second 
Isn't it good? Without knowing any CSS, we have applied some styling to that. And again, this is thankful to, we should be thankful to some guys who have created, and there are lots of, lots of other CSS I'll show you. There are, uh, there are so many things that you can just, you know, use that. So skeleton CSS, I've used that. And I have also used that, uh, that, uh, that water CSS that we have. So I have this one. You see, it's, it's also water going on over there. Maybe about is not, not a page. So this is what we have. <laughs> okay, no problem. And, and, and second, if you don't like the uh, white pages, you will definitely know CSS and through CSS, you can do so many wonderful things. I'll let you know, right? <laughs> okay, so far so good. Can you add CSS to only certain sections? Let us and yes, let us and again. This is going to the whole page. Please be with me. Please bear with me, Lethison. <laughs> I know you are trying to go ahead. Don't worry. I will tell you each and everything. Each and everything. How could you change only this? How could you change only this? How could you change only this? Only this. Background color. What background color? This picture. I need to. Have... There are so many things that we'll do. But did you understand that link tag is used for linking that one? And I'll stop here. I'll take a break because I need a break now. <laughs> and let's meet after. Five minutes mostly. Two fifteen is in my clock, so two twenty. So see you after the break, and we'll discuss some more stuff. Can you all see my screen? Okay. Let me let you know. I understand it's visible now. Thank you. Okay, right. So this was the I've told you that this is basically one of the way. Now, this was not the specifically topic. We had some other topic, but again, you can always have this, uh, these, these one with your web page, and you can always connect to the CSS. The real issue that I wanted to discuss here was that how to connect to the script, because because I now, from now onwards, will try to just connect my HTML with my with my JavaScript code because we have learned JavaScript a lot of time. Now, now see here how to connect to the JavaScript. So to connect your document to JavaScript, we again use the link element link and sorry not link sorry script we use a script tag script and out of that discuss like select script src when you write a script src you need to have a script that you want to connect it to your page now for your information today morning i have this like i've created a scripts folder where i have script.js now I will create a new file for you guys and I'll say nee.js, you know, just to show you. So I want to connect to this nee.js. What I'll do, I'll come over here again. What I'll say, I, I say, okay, go to scripts folder. There you'll find nee.js. Connect to that nee.js. Now, if my page is, is successfully connected to nee.js, let's write some some JavaScript code, which you are familiar with. Hello from NEE JavaScript file. Right, so I've just written down one JavaScript file. But you know what, where I have written down console. So if it, even if it is connected, and I want to know that whether it is connected or not, I'll have to go to console of the browser. I'll go to the console, and here I find out hello from NEE JavaScript, very bad spelling. JavaScript file, and if you see that now, I have, I get, I can see that one. I refresh this, and I get that one. You know what I mean? I have successfully connected my C, my JavaScript file with my HTML. Does that make sense to everyone? And this is an achievement. Why? Because we learned JavaScript separately. We know JavaScript. We learned HTML separately, but now how to bridge them, like you know, how to how to combine them. This is the first effort. And you know, there is one another very important, very interesting one that we always test. Hello alert from from NEE NE file. Okay, let this and I'll I'll uh, so now we need to bring it from console. Uh, console it from console. To, yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll talk about that. But do you see that alert? Alert gives the alert. Hello alert from the NEE file. You see second? And if I click on that one, you'll see that hello from NEE from the JavaScript file. If I again refresh that, it will come first. The alert will come. If I hit OK, you will see that hello from NEE. So my script is running. You see NEE.js. This is one way of connecting to the script. And this is also proper way. There is another way. I want to write my, so I just made that comment. 
So now it is not connected to the script. If I just see that, if I refresh that, nothing working. Why? Because there is no script, right? I can write my script in the script tag as well by, by itself. Just write a script and here write console.log inline script program, right? So I can write my script like this as well. If I just put a terminator, do you see that now it is working? If I just show you. So I can write my script inside my document as well. I can write that same alert as well. So if I get alert, hello. Yes, we can create any number of scripts. I'll tell you. Hello. Hello from internal script, right? It's called inter internal script. If I run that one, you see hello from internal script. Now, big question that someone has asked. If we have multiple script files, Oh, no, 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 no. Let me say, I can do that Node.js with, with, but HTML does not run in Node.js. Don't worry about that. When we will just start connecting it with, now we'll be just checking it in the browser because HT, uh, because Node.js cannot run your web pages, by the way. It does not know HTML. You know what I mean? So if I just unclick this one and I run that one. So you see, see from, hello alert from NEE file. From the outside file, first of all, alert. Okay. Hello from the internal script. The internal script that I do. Okay. And now you see that I have got both of the lines over here. This line, inline scripting, and the line from the NE dot. So you can have any number of scripts as you want. I think your question was like this. Uh, Sagan, you wanted to ask this? Uh, you can have any number of scripts. You can have any number of CSS by the way. This brings me flashbacks to the are you sure you want to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you see that if I come over here and I say another sheet, another script, I can have any number of scripts over here. Another script. And I can say alert also, annoying alert, right? <laughs> because alerts are very annoying because you cannot do anything at all. You see first alert from this file, okay. Then internal script, okay. Then annoying alert because this is keeps on staying the alert. So let's say that, but you see that these files are written. So as second has sensed that, next week can you put that alert into a for loop? <laughs> yes, we can do that. By the way, we can do that. By the way, we can do that. And you know, it will keep on doing that one. And we'll keep on running that alert for, for maybe, <laughs> let me just show you that annoying thing. <laughs> because if you are asking that. So I'll say for var i is equal to, <laughs> var i equal to zero. And let's keep it very small, three, i plus plus. Run my for loop. <laughs> and please, everyone should blame, uh, you know, uh, uh, second for that one, right? <laughs> Please don't blame me. Uh, control V. I'll just paste it over here. Save that. So, and I got Okay, just just let me let me just you know run that one. Hello from any file. Okay. Hello alert from any file. Okay. Hello alert from any file. Okay. <laughs> Internal and then I get. When that when it is asking for alert. Yes, you can close that. No, no, but but you you get locked into that page, you know, and you, you get locked into that page. But anyhow, you can just close that one. If you close that, it goes away. But you have to just, you know, put okay to everything. And that's why it is very annoying. And that's why it's not very much recommended to, to use these kind of things. <laughs> yes, let me you found his intentions. <laughs> very bad intention. And it's very bad. Alert. You know, alert is basically it's it's said that you should not use alerts. Alerts are so bad because you know they stop your all all happening and all something. But anyhow, do you understand that there can be? But we understand that there can be multiple uh, uh, scripts. I'm just removing all the scripts. I just want one script with them, and that script is just producing a console dot log. And in next week, not not the set next session. Next session will be a very interesting one. I'll take some websites and I'll try to code them in front of you. And again, that would be a Friday session with ZBB. So you have to just, you know, maybe if you want to attend, you can attend that. And if you want to just, you know, look at the recording, so depending on the type of this is different. Uh, not really, like you said, it does not really depend. Yes, but the, the browser support is something which, which, which might be different, which might be different, right? But again, uh, uh, scripts will work surely for, for the same way. Oh, second, that's a very good question. Second, do you, do you remember that I shared, uh, course material document two, 2000 years back <laughs> when we had our session started 2000 years back i shared a document course material 
in that course material you will find the link of zbb section and friday class and that happens on friday at 5 10 pm in the evening second do you remember the course material document <laughs> yeah okay no problem okay right so this is basically the console uh, document that we like console dot at now i would like to tell you something that i have discussed in the previous class as well you know one of the observation and and I, i'll talk about the image sizes one of the thing is that let me just remove this lorem and write the issue we always want to have smaller size pictures and everything you want to keep your pictures and everything to smaller size why because you don't want user to wait for your website yes for resolution for file size for everything now let's talk about something i have a picture i'll take it from unsplash.com i'll bring it from unsplash.com and let's say again tree picture it's a tree picture so for example i say this picture looks very good i click on that i download that picture maybe in the medium size just for mother nothing i have got that downloaded now there is a website there are multiple websites yes exactly there is a multiple website that are used to you know uh, use one of them is squoosh.app just open the squoosh.app it literally squishes you know squeezes our our script like you know our uh, you know the the pictures it will it will re- literally squish them right you know now what is that picture i want to squish over here what is that picture so uh, from the downloads i have this download picture that i'll just bring it over here now you see that this is the picture that i'll just open it up now very interestingly this is the original picture on my left side and this is the compressed picture do you see any difference between and and by the way what is the compression it is doing right side is converting into into something called moss jpeg like again in a jpeg another jpeg like you know uh, uh, you know format but it is making its size 40% less yes and if you see here that it is 2.01 mb and it is converting it to 1.21 mb okay looks good but let's talk about some other format there is a format called avif i'll talk about that format if i convert it to avif let's see how much it will just reduce the size let's see that how much size it will reduce it is just calculating right now and i'll talk about this avif format by the way it is just calculating does it calculate for you maybe it's taking more time for me maybe it it does it good for you or oh, it's taking too much time of that i don't know oh yeah so you see 556% less it will be 883 kb you see 2.01 mb has been converted to it okay there are other formats i'll talk about that webp see what webp will do it will it will just make it 37% i'll talk about all these you know formats but first of all do you understand what's going on so the the most smaller one looks like avif format okay looks like 883 okay just do that and and again when i'm converting that it is not noticeable from our naked eye that it there is any difference in that one you see here so now i'll download that i'll download that picture in what format in avif format now i'll go to another one for example i go to moss jpeg which is there i can download this jpeg it is 1.21 mb and then i can just download it in webp now webp so i have downloaded this in maybe three formats or four formats you know what i mean it one 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 was the original picture and then there are certain pictures that are that i have just downloaded now you might be thinking what is the benefit of that i'll i'll just tell you the benefit of that now go back to our html code let's go back to our html code there is an element which is called picture element picture element has a very interesting syntax i'll show you picture element so i'll just show you picture elements can take multiple types of picture in a in a, in a format i'll just show you its example like this and it can it can just you know display the picture so what what it will do i'll just you know copy this code from here and i come back into my page and i i copy that code okay i don't want src set to be like this 
So for example, I'll change its name to tree, right? So I'll say tree, for example, dot webp. I have, you know, I have downloaded in webp. I'll change that tree dot avif. I have downloaded in avif. And maybe the main source I will put as tree dot jpg, the main picture. Right side of the location. What do you mean by that? That isn't right, right, right side of the location means. Uh, it is the link. Uh, you, I, I, you know, I just copy that and deleted that. What do you mean by it is the link? I'm not getting it. You press the beginning. Oh. Can you can you unmute yourself and erase the right side? No, I did not click. I, I just you know selected that everything. I don't know. It's it's not a it's not any any shortcut or something. I I just I think I selected everything and deleted that, or maybe overridden that that value. You know what I mean? Okay. So see here, I have just given these three pictures. Now I'd like to show you what will happen. This is my document running document here. Uh, oh, where is my running document? This is my running document. Now let's let's it's okay because these pictures are not there. And again, I will bring these pictures in my images folder. Images slash tree dot web web p dot images slash uh, tree dot web and again images slash. So I'll pick, pick bring those pictures over there. Images slash tree dot jpg, which is not there. Of course, that's why it's not giving me the help. And there is no picture over here. Now what I'll do, I'll just go and copy this one. So I'll copy this one, two, three, and maybe this fourth one. Cut that from here. And I'll just put them in my folder, working folder, which is week six and images. You, you see, in images, I, I did the same example for the card picture today, but I'm doing it with you with the, with the tree picture. And what I'll do is that, of course, I'll rename this with the tree. Tree. I should have renamed the first one tree and just call it tree. Uh, okay, so it's uh, okay, it's, it's, it's basically the same, maybe. So, okay, just do that tree too. And so, whenever the format will be different, it will just recognize you know the name. So, let's see that one now. If I refresh this page, okay, still I don't get that one. Uh, why? Okay, I have tree dot jpg, tree dot avf, tree dot. Okay, I'll just check that. Maybe I have just not made the right links. So I'll come here and I'll say dot slash images slash tree. Okay, okay, that's a problem. Can you tell me what is the problem? Why it is not giving the pictures? I'm saying images or tree dot jpg, but it's not giving the pictures. And look at my folder structure, by the way. And I am inside an index dot n e e. No extension is there. Extension is there. Dot jpg dot avif dot jpg. There is something something else. Not jpg. Or rather, I would I would like to bring here avif and uh, webp. I'll just you know use that one. But it's not giving me the pictures. Why? It's not giving me the picture. Look at my directory structure. By the way, I'm working. Yes, cannot look at. And why cannot look at? Because I am trying to find in the same folder. Yes, double dot will come, ladies and thank you. Double dot will come. A double dot will come. A double dot with slash will come. You know what I mean? And now it should bring pictures, but I'll, I'll have to look maybe why it is not now, why it is not printing now. So now I'll just, you know, again, uh, images, yes, slash, no, it's not recognizing that one still. Oh. Uh, why is that? Why it's not recognized? I don't know. I'll have to just check that one because it is in the same folder, uh, like you know, same root. So why it is not taking that image images? Uh, it's not. It's not even accepting that folder, you know. And if it accepts that, it will just give the names of that folders. Just let me check that. Index and e -E images are there. That's bad. It's it's not something what I was understanding. It's something wrong. 
maybe refresh the week six folder. Um, okay, let me just see that. Okay. There's a refresh button, I think, right beside. Yeah, week six, I, I, I can see that. And it is there, but images are there. And you know why it's not even accepting that one. That's that's a, that's the issue. Even in SRC, you see dot slash. Oh, now it is recognizing. Looks like there is there was something wrong. Anyhow, so I'll say okay. Pre dot. So for example, I want to bring pre dot JPG from for example over here, right? And then I'll see what what other pictures are available. And I'll just you know go through that way because I don't want to just you know you see that as for SRC set it's not working. Oh my God. But anyhow, let's do that. Free dot avif. We have free dot avif. And let's come back over here. <laughs> Images slash tree dot webpy. I don't know what you are talking about. I'm still confused. Okay, there is no tree dot jpg over here. There is a tree dot jpg. Why in the world you are not showing those tree dot jpg? <laughs> As I use the same right picture, picture element. Okay, looks like there is something wrong with this one. I'll just check that one. Rather, I'll just delete this all. And I'll bring that picture tag again, picture element again. And I'll bring that whole picture element for the time. Control C, Control V. And what I do is that I would like to remove all those things. And I'll just say, so did I again that do that? Images not recognizing three dot webp. And not slash images. Here it is recognizing. Okay, anyhow. But even then, it is not giving the picture. Q.jpg, why it's not giving the picture? Anyhow, if you are recognizing, you should do that. And never happened before. I don't know what's happening here. So it says MDN. You see that IMG image is not coming. Okay, let me just check that. Yes, tree.jpg is there. Okay. Hmm. Tree.dev is there. Tree of tree dot, tree dot picture is there. Okay, let me just you know bring that car picture, maybe. Images slash car.jpg. Oh, even car.jpg is not coming. Oh, there is something wrong, really. There is there is really something wrong over here. Let me just make this comment all and let's use IMG only. Images slash car dot JPG. Okay, the car is coming over here. Hmm. Then why in the world you are not using this, this one? Okay. <laughs> So IMG is coming over here and, and let me bring that picture as well, not the tree picture, tree.jpg. Ah, tree.j, oh, sorry. Images slash uh, tree.jpg. Just done that. Okay, tree.jpg is coming. Okay, there is something wrong with the picture element, even though it was working in the morning. I don't know why it's not working, but anyhow, I'll try to place that inside the picture. Now I'm going the other way around. Okay, picture is still coming. That's wonderful. Now it is coming. I don't know what mistake I was doing. So now let's let's put a source and src set equal to that forward slash images slash three dot webp. And again, I'm not worried about now that it is not showing me source src set 
equal to dot slash images slash three dot avif. Right, so I'm not worried about that one. Okay, the picture goes away again. Okay, so it has something to do with this source not working. Okay, anyhow, I can show you in the in my index page that today, which I which I used. It's there, and you see, images card dot web page is exactly the same. And I run this for you. You know, it's from the morning document. You see, the picture is coming, <laughs> and I'm doing exactly the same tag. And and if I if I just use exactly this copy this one. And I go to index.html, and I paste this one. You know, I just copied that one. Copy this one. Save. And if I see my document, okay, images image is coming. If I say three dot jpg, okay, it's not coming. Why? Because I'll tell you. Three dot webp and three dot avif. Oh, <laughs> there is something seriously going on. You see that I have just copied exactly the same thing from there, and now it's not working for this one. So it it just basically with with this source set, it is just you know making some some problem. Okay, I understand that that might be one problem because I don't have. Create like you know uh, tree dot avif is there tree dot jpg but there's not tree dot web webp uh, should I take that away maybe that that is the problem yes I got it you know the webp picture is not found that's why it's creating a problem over here you know what I mean let me just you know bring up the webp again so this is the webp I'll download that I'll see that in the folder and I'll call it uh, I'll call it three, right? So it's a web picture. I'll cut that one. I'll cut that one and I'll paste it in my folder. Uh, it's images folder. I'll paste that. Okay, now it will work. You see, now it will work, definitely. Because I understand now what is the problem. So source SRC set equal to dot forward slash images slash Three dot webp. Now, if hopefully not, the picture will be visible in that one. You see, the picture is there now. Uh, yes. So let us say uh, it's. I don't know why, why it's showing this behavior. I don't exactly know by the way, but what it was doing is that one picture was not there, and it was just you know not uh, not allowing us to use any of them. Maybe that was creating a problem inside a browser or something that something like that. But of course, when you are when you are just you know defining that one. Uh, you yes maybe memory buffer or something something wrong 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 but now here here let us just focus on something which I want to tell you this picture is over here I have given three resources I have given tree dot jpg I have given tree dot avif I have given tree dot webp now let's see which one is the downloaded here which one is the used again for the size for the size issue so when you go to your inspector tool you will find there is a network tab do you see network tab now if you just refresh your page you will see that it will tell you that which picture is coming. So you see that it is bringing up webp. Webp is the smallest of uh, like it, it is just bringing up the webp right now, not the smallest one, but it is it is accepting this webp over here. Why I'll tell you that why it is accepting. Now if I just take away this webp from here and I refresh that, do you see that which three picture is coming now? Three is coming as an Exactly. Avif. So you see, Avif is the smallest one, smaller one. It brings up Avif. If I just take away Avif as well, of course. If I take away this one as well, of course, now what will come? Three dot JPG will come for me. Is that making sense to everyone? In network tag, we can see that okay, which picture has been downloaded for me. You know what I mean? So it's just bringing up that that tree dot jpg over here, and this tree dot jpg is basically showing over here. It's a jpg file, and it has whatever size it is. It's just giving that, that. exactly. So browser will prefer one or, one or over, over the other. And now let me tell you where you can find that. There is a website can I use dot com. Can I use dot com? You just just go over there and you find what is that. So if you if you write webp, it will say image format based on the VP8 video format that supports lossy and lossless compression. As well as animation and alpha transparency, WebP generally has better compression than JPG, PNG. You see, WebP. And what is supported? 
web page is supported in Internet Explorer, maybe. In the, and, and, and by the way, Internet Explorer is going to die tomorrow, you know? Do, have, you, have you read this one? <laughs> yeah. So Internet Explorer will, will go away from here. So Edge, Edge is supporting this one. Firefox is supporting this one. Chrome is supporting all this one. Safari and this one. So these are this is one of the format. You can read about this one. And there is another format, AVIF, that we have just done. AVIF is a modern image format based on AV1 video format. And AV has better compression than WebP, JPEG, PNG, GIF, and is designed to supersede them. It will supersede them. You see that? It's not supported in the Explorer, not in Edge till now, till date. Firefox supports this in versions. Chrome supports this, this version. Safari does not support it. Opera. So whatever it supports, it will just download that picture for that reason. If I have used all of them, it will prefer one or the other. And it will just, you know, supersede the other. And it will just, you know. Okay. I'm sorry about that. It is just, you know. This is very bad. The comments are sometimes very annoying in HTML. Yes, second one you're saying. So technically in Edge, that tree won't be there if that if we use them. No, no, second, not tree. Uh, tree will be there, but second, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever format IE will understand, Edge will understand, will bring that one. You know what I mean? You see here, if you have used AVIF, Edge will not download uh, like the AVIF file, rather it will download maybe JPG or WebP. Let's see what about the WebP. You know what I mean? Second, I hope you understand the concept. So if you are using WebP, so if Edge will understand WebP, it will, it will bring that WebP rather than that. Second, you got the idea? Okay. Second, what is your question? Can you just repeat? Can, can you just, because I, what, what will happen? Internet Explorer does not support WebP. So it will never download WebP. It will always look for, for example, it will always look for the JPG because JPG is, is you see, JPG. Let's talk about JPG. Okay. What is that? JPG. Okay. <laughs> It's saying that it's not supposed. What if there is no JPG? Okay, so then we have GIF. You can just go for the GIF as well. GIF. You know, convert your picture into GIF as well. So you you have this. Uh, you have this GIF option. GIF option is not available over here. You can just you know go for some some other maybe the PNG option. You want to convert that to PNG. PNG. You see that 554 percent. It has just coming down. And again, look at the quality. You know what I mean? So PNG should be supported. Let's let's check that PNG. Oh, not PN, dot, not dot, PNG. But you see that PNG is supported almost everywhere. You know what I mean? Second, so usually usually JPG is supported in all of them, but of course we'll just give them the alternate and again. It always falls down to this one. So, so image SRC, it will always fall down. The source will check for the different one and it will fall down to the to this one. Right, everyone? So it is you can just check this test to the so using the picture tags, give the option the browser to use which extension that is compatible with. Yes, exactly. So picture tag will give them, we give them the, the option over. Now validating our HTML document, last topic for today. And there are lots of HTML validator online that you can use to validate your document. And you know, I have some problem. That's why it is just, you know, not making prettier, but I'll just talk about that. So you can open any of the validator and copy your code and paste it over here. So it will tell me what is the problem where I have just made mistake if I have any mistake in my document. You see here it says, it says I see a header ending element Sorry, this can't find images. No. So if you see, error and header tag is ending element is found, but not started. So I, by mistake, I think, I think I have just either removed the, the document and the header from the bottom. Oh, yes. So you see that? No, no, not here. Maybe this is the header. I have this header. Why it is just saying? I had seen, but there was an open element. There was open elements. Okay, it's not accepting inside this one. 
So maybe just remove that header for a second. Let's see. Copy this one. Paste it over here and check. So say and tag SP on my line line 40. So let's go to line 40. There is something which is making problem. Oh, SP. This is it's a straight tag, span. It has to be span. Right? Okay. Now let's check that one. Maybe this was the problem that I had. If I just now check that one. Okay, it says text not allowed in element picture element. So in picture element, I cannot use any other text. So what text I have used over there? Maybe this one. This is a bad thing because it was the, it was coming out from the comment. Now let's select that one and now again paste that one and check that. You see a source element that has following sibling source element or image element with a SRC set must have a media attribute or type attribute. Okay, so it is looking for a media or type attribute of SRC set. So let's we can just find out that if there is a if there is a media attribute or or something like that. So SRC set yes it it, it asks for the media you know the media attribute with that. So let me let me just you know copy this one the media attribute from here and paste it over here. Okay, and I'll have to do what media and the min width and just close that one, right? And do the same with this one. Now see here, let's now validate our document. I copy and paste it over here and you see document check completed, no error warning and that's it. Yes, it shows the errors. It's showing the errors. You, you see, let's and, and and now I'll do a little little code, like you know, just just to show you. So, for example, I'll just you know, uh, copy a little. This is a smaller document. I'll just copy this one, and I'll show you what it shows. No, 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 not for the image location. How do you know that? What is the image location problem? You see that again. Here also it is saying that source element, and again I have used that that picture source over here as well. So I can just paste it over. Oh, sorry. I can paste it over here or I can just, you know, for the time being, close this picture element, you know, just to show you something. So if I just, you know, have, so how would it know that, how would it know that the picture is not there? Because it does not have anything to, related to path. So this expecting, when expecting attribute, possible cause missing this one, line number 40. So let's go to line number 40. You see line number 40 has something. Okay, you see that how bad it is. <laughs> It is very bad over here and looks like I have made a mess of some HTML. You know, I've just done the copy paste over here, something like that. And it has just made a mess of that. One. So I don't want to make that mess. I rather want to just, you know, take away this picture. So I'll just delete this picture from here for the time being. Now copy this one. Uh, you know, uh, professionals also use, uh, like, you know, so again, these formats as well. And, and if they have a validator at all with them, they can just use them as well. Again, some companies, they made their own validators and they ask their employees to just validate their documents with them. You know, because the validators might be might be different for different situations. You have another application, then you want to just, you know, you want that, that to allow, so that will happen. Now see here, if you remember, we talked about table yesterday. If I give you a very interesting thing, you remember I told you that this table, let me create a table, TD, hello, right? And let me, oh, I just started working on index.html, which is bad. <laughs> I just don't want it to be an index.html, right? Rather, I want to work on index. This one, this is my document, right? So if I create a table over here, just to show you the, the wrong thing inside this div, if I create a table and I say tr and I say td, hello, and td by something like that, I have a table. Of course, it's not the and, and you remember I told you that there is an obsolete, obsolete one. If I say border equal to one, now it will show me the border as well. So you see the border is also coming. But do you see that border is the red color? Now, if I just you know check this one, this document again, validate this document over here. You see the border attribute on the table element is obsolete. So can you understand that? Border is an obsolete, and that is that is not a new thing for you. Our browser, our, our Visual Studio code is telling us about it. Now, another question: uh, Nathison was was be, becoming, you know, uh, 
very enthusiastic about changing the font. There is a there is very old slow method of changing the font color. That is font element. There is there used to be a font element. So see here, <laughs> I'll show you a very interesting thing. Uh, Lattison, which is bad. Of course, you see that is the red color, and I say font, and I can say color equal to green. See here. First of all, I'll show you the output. Do you see my text color has gone green? <laughs> But you see that it's in red color. And let me say, never do that because we will do that by using CSS. See here, it will tell you. If I check that one, you'll say that font element is obsolete. Use instead CSS, and it'll tell you what what CSS we want to use. But I would highly recommend never use that CSS. I will never allow you to use the CSS. It will tell you how to use the CSS, but don't worry about that because you will get confused. as you got confused with the deleting or something right so now if i just take away this font of course you know this is giving me the right output looks like very nice green color but it's not allowed it's not a valid thing if i take away this border first the border and then i take away this font tag now my document should not have any problems at all if i go here Go there. Uh, how does one actually change the font itself to Corial? Itself to Corial? Itself, it never changes. There is a default. Default. You know. You know. You know. Right now, the style has been applied from this CSS. If I make this also a, a, a comment for a second, you you mean that these fonts? These are these are all default fonts. So let us listen about that one. These are all default default style sheet that browser implements when there is no other style sheet being implemented. you know what i mean and when you implement a style sheet on that one like this it will just adopt the style sheet font over there and let us and for that answer you should also wait for our css class where i'll tell you that where where does this css styling come from when we are implementing that css styling over there right let us okay so this is all that we wanted to discuss today and i'll share this code later on after as i as i told you that after i will have a discussion with that bb so again if you want to join that session you can always go there and you can find out over there anyone who is who is looking at this recording and they want to just you know just to get the join that zbb section friday 5 10 pm you can always join that so i'll stop recording now and again if you have any questions related to assignments which i understand uh second you have Can we can we discuss this tomorrow, like tomorrow morning? Uh, not tomorrow, Friday morning. Is 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 there a time between that one? Because I don't remember that. What is the what is the 